The Small Business Show, episode 379 for Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. Welcome back to the Small Business Show, or welcome to the Small Business Show. If this is your first visit here, we are here at businessshow.co, and that is where we are small business-ing every week. Sponsors for this episode include shopify.com slash SBS, uh, where you can go and get a 14-day trial to their full suite of features, and also Rate Tracker, your credit card processing rate watchdog at sky-sale.com slash rate tracker. We put those links in the show notes for you so you don't even have to remember. And uh, we'll talk more in depth about each of those sponsors a little bit later here in the episode. For now, as usual, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. I wasn't sure if we lost you there for a second, man. A little bit. I was, I was looking at these notes, thinking, okay, I got to do this, that, and I was like, oh, it's my turn. <laughs> it's time to talk. <laughs> time to talk. That's right. Usually not a problem for me. No, that's right. Well, that's why, I, you know, I was like, wait, did I mute him? What happened? Because <laughs> that wouldn't be the first time, you know, that I'm yeah. like, you're yeah. talking and it's like, I see the levels dancing on the mixer, yes. but there is no sound. Like how many Zoom meetings have we all been in the last oh, couple of years? You're like, uh, you're on mute. You're muted. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're on mute. <laughs> I um I got the opportunity last week to go to an in-person event. There's this company called Pepcom that that hosts these press events. They 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 have been called speed dating for the press, which is a great term for them. It's uh it's kind of like going to a a trade show, except okay. the only attendees that are allowed at these events are the press, and. No one gets to bring their own booth in. Every vendor gets the same size table. So I don't have, you don't have to worry about traversing, you know, somebody's okay, weird yeah. booth layout or what, you know, that's, yeah. it's, it, you just, you go from table to the tables are set up before anybody gets there, before the press get there and before the vendors even get there. And it's like, that's your table. You set up on that and you're done. Like they can put a little sign up behind it or whatever. That's all fine, but it's very well laid out. And, uh, and, and, and these have been fantastically valuable for me over the years, just cause it's, you know, it's like three hours and I can go see, you know, there were 41 vendors at this thing the other night, there were about 18 of them that were really of interest to me. And, you know, it's just great to be able to get to see people and interact with their products and actually see the products and just remind us, remind everybody that we're all human and, you know, all of that good stuff. But it was the first of these that I have been to. This year, and I think it was the first in person. Well, I was at South by Southwest, uh, certainly for that trade show. But it was the first of these kinds of things that I've been to since we uh, since we completed the acquisition of the Mac Observer since that sale okay, yeah. happened. Yeah. And this was certainly the first event that I was at where th that was my prior identity. Now, even inside the Mac Observer for the last 10 years, uh, you know, my main content came through my Mac Geek Gab podcast, which is something that I kept separate from the acquisition. The person who came in did not want that podcast. And, and that was, quite frankly, a big part of uh, the attraction of that deal. I mean, there were many facets that were sure, attracting, yeah, but not having to figure out how to sell that to someone and then not have to go work for them. You know, it was like, wait a minute, this, this is, this could be a nice little clean. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, but even still, you know, I would, I would wear a badge at these things that said Mac observer and Mac geek Gab on it. And, and this in theory was going to be the first one where I did not have that on my badge. Well, they, just printed the badges from the old list. So, ah. uh, yeah. So I showed up and there was Mac Observer on the badge. I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's fine. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's how things work. They're like, yeah, we're it's sorry. Talking point. Well, that yeah. was it, is it became a talking point. And it was a fantastic talking point because, first of all, no one, I, you know, I was worried in some circles that if I said I was no longer attached to the Mac Observer anymore, would I get the same level of attention uh, nice. just for being Dave from Mac Geek Gab, you, you know, that I that I got previously, which was, uh, you know, some some mix of, of the two. 
And no one thus far, I have not encountered any, ven, you know, of the, the companies that I've worked with over the years. No one has seen this as a negative thing. And most people see it as a very positive thing. It, you know, it being able to, like you said, it was a talking point saying, oh, yeah, you know, I really should cross this out. And I'd put my finger over the, the line on the badge and explain that, you know, the site was acquired at the beginning of the year. And and uh, and everybody's like, oh, wow, that's wow. Congratulations. And they would want to talk about it a little bit. And then, of course, we'd get into letting them talk about their products and and that sort of thing. But it was it really I, like in good conscience, I certainly could not have planned this. Uh, I right. would not have asked. In fact, I asked for exactly the opposite from for that not to be on there because that's appropriate. But it was on there. Everybody understood it was a mistake. I, you know, and I was able to talk through it, but it worked out really well. It was quite serendipitous, you know, to be able to That's have great. that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. changed the frame on it. That's you know? it. Yeah. I think uh, name tags are a tremendously underutilized communication method. And, mm. and I, what I mean by that, when I used to send all our guys to Macworld, you know, yeah. uh, and I would do all their name tags. And I would always put their name, but there was a spot, if you recall, yes. or right below where you can put the company. And But there was also some other stuff. Some like other, you put their another, Twitter handle yeah. or something. Like people Whatever would figure out yeah. things to put on it over time. Yeah. yeah. And, and I would always put things, you know, a comment, a question, some way to get these because, you know, I'm sending texts and salespeople, but some way to kind of people would look at it and go, what? That's weird. You know, and it could have been. Something like I, I had our buyers and I would always put like, oh, I buy stuff, you know, or best dressed award, oh. you know, winner 2019. And just w funny little things that people would look at and it would get them to engage them because they read it on the name tag. And uh, they, people would come back and be like, oh, man, I had like 50 people come up to me and ask me what this meant, all this kind of stuff. So it, 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 you can be creative with your name tags to, to help break the ice. And especially if you're going to an event that you uh, you don't know any yeah. uh, know anything yeah um, I often use the ter the tagline I get stuff done under my name I like um, it yeah I, I do it you know it's just kind of get somebody to like what are you talking about what's that you know that kind of thing so uh, oh. that's a great story with the Mac Observer on yeah it. no it it really yeah they, but now you're get, you're getting me thinking about even if you can't control. You know, even if there isn't the opportunity to add something interesting or creative or engaging to the name tag, well, you can always have a sticker printed up and yes. put a sticker on a name tag. Like this this particular event, it was in Manhattan where I believe, certainly for this event, there was a vaccine requirement. I think that's the case in most indoor events over a certain size in Manhattan anyway. Uh, so they, you know, they checked our vax cards and then we just put, yeah. you know, they gave us a sticker that we put on our, on our badge so that on our name tag, yep. so that, you know, that's, that's how that was done. But yeah, there was no, nothing stopping me from putting yet a different sticker on there too, <laughs> right. alongside True that blood. one. What's <laughs> yeah, that? <blood>. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you yeah, know, I mean, I, I could, I, yeah. I could put something on there and it would it be, works, man. yeah, I'm wondering like, should I, it's cheesy, but it works. Well, it is cheesy, but that's okay. Yes. Like that's okay. Cheesy yeah. gets people, gets people's eyeballs. Right. And, and you then have the opportunity to show that you either are cheesy or aren't cheesy. Uh, by yes. discussing this thing that in and of itself is cheesy. And you could even say, oh, yeah, I put that on there so that we'd have this conversation. But Exactly. You know, exactly. I, I had I held an event this uh, weekend, and there was a couple hundred people there, a bunch yep. of reserve tables. It was a fundraiser okay. uh, kind of thing. And I always, when I create the name tags for the tables, this, this placard, if you will, yep. uh, that sits in the center, and these people go there. And I always put something on each placard to get everybody talking. And it could be like, you know, I, I always do award, you know, uh, awarded best looking table, oh, 2020, wow. you know, 2022, best dressed award, you know, two years running. <laughs> it, just little things. Yeah. Because people look at that, and then I see they, because some people, People go to tables and they don't know anybody. Right. Um, and so I'm trying to, you know, again, get another icebreaker and be like, what's that? You know, or, you know, come up with interesting table names if there's not a sponsor for that table and be like, oh, you're at this table and come up with different things. So it, it's, like it's fun it. to do and it gets people talking. No, it gets people. Yeah, that's it. It's a, yeah. Thinking about those icebreakers. That's really smart. Oh, yeah.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people won't, most people won't do that for themselves, especially like you nope. said, technical people that are, you yeah. know, it's, yeah. it's just not part of the culture to be cute like that, if you will, it, you know, or, that's or cheesy. Right. Like it, that. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. And, and yeah. I'm, you know, it, it's, I did it first time. I think I did it just to, just to give these guys a hard time, you know, of and, course. and kind of just mess with them because they were my employees. And then, then once they started telling me, yeah, everybody asked about this. I'm like, oh, that's, that's brilliant. Let's do that every time. Yeah. <laughs> let's not stop that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, uh, speaking of something that we don't want to stop, uh, We've got some uh, listener questions. You know, we have this email address, feedback at businessshow.co. We say it during every episode. We often say it at the end. We probably should start saying it at the beginning uh, because we've listened. We've looked at the the stats and even the people that listen to the end don't necessarily make it all the way to the end. But you might want to at times. Heartbreaking. Yeah, it is heartbreaking. <laughs> I know we put a lot of put a lot of effort into that, but it's fine. But uh, yeah, feedback at businessshow.co is where you can send in your questions. And in fact, we have, I believe, I think there's there's three we have in the can. I, I, we probably will have time to get to two of them today. But yeah, that's okay. a couple of couple of really good ones. Yeah. So uh, I I think. It, we're, 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 the, the value of a name tag as an icebreaker, which I didn't know was, was going to be the topic as, as I brought this up, but it seems like we've wrapped that up. Is that, uh, are we yes. good on this one? <laughs> I think we're done with that one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The next thing I'd like to do before we start answering your questions is tell you about our two sponsors, if that works for you, Mr. Gene. Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right, listen, we've talked about payment processing on this show before, and we've talked about how there's a lot of payment processors who take advantage of the confusion of the whole market of that by taking advantage of you and charging you way more than you think you're paying. And this is why we love Rate Tracker, because Rate Tracker, presented by SkySail Solutions here, is a free solution that allows you to easily and automatically understand your bottom line credit card processing rates and fees every month. Listen, this is free. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more, but really what you want to do is go to sky-sale.com slash rate tracker. We'll put this link in the show notes at businessshow.co too, so you don't have to remember, but it's sky-sale.com slash rate tracker. And you know, like I said, they exist so that you as a small business owner can know your costs to accept payments so you don't get lied to or taken advantage of by your payment processor. And they will monitor things, right? They make it super simple and they give you free access to trusted payments experts like SkySale Solutions. They can give you free advice on how to optimize your payment acceptance program. Visit sky-sale.com slash rate tracker to sign up for the only service that's dedicated to helping you know your numbers, keep track of your payment processing costs, and alerts you immediately if there's ever a rate increase. So, like I said, you want Rate Tracker to be your credit card processing rate watchdog. Go check it out, sky-sale.com slash rate tracker. And our thanks to Rate Tracker presented by SkySale for doing what they're doing. And for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> we love that sound because that's the sound of another sale on Shopify. The all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your businesses. And I say businesses. A lot of us have different things going on. Shopify can probably help you with most, if not all of them. Because Shopify is a platform designed for anyone to sell anywhere. Giving Entrepreneurs, people who are small businessing like you and me, the resources once reserved for big businesses, customized for our needs with a great looking online store that can bring your idea to life and tools to manage our day to day and drive sales. Making your idea real opens endless possibilities. And it's a journey, but that's the beauty of small businessing, right? It, Shannon and I have used Shopify in various ventures over the years. They make it so easy because they figured all the tough stuff out, right? They're experts at that. You're experts at other things. Put it together. Boom. You've leveled up in a huge way. And it's not just us. Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs from first sale to full scale. Every 28 seconds, a small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. So get started by building and customizing your online store with no coding or design experience necessary. You can access all their powerful tools to help you find customers, drive sales, and manage your 
day to day. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. So go to shopify.com slash SBS, that's all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now. Shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. I don't know if you can hear it, but when you have to say shopify.com slash SBS, in order to do that clearly, you have to do that thing with your face that actors do to make sure everything yes. gets enunciated and you, <laughs> you scrunch up the top of your face so your lip doesn't get in the way. Yeah, that's, I don't know if you can hear me having to do that, but that's, that's, that's the effort we put into making sure you there we go. get clarity of information from us. Yes, face gymnastics. <laughs> face gymnastics, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. Yeah, All right. right. We have some questions. Uh, I we will, I, I'll start by reading Rob's and then maybe uh, yeah. you, you, you can kick us there. off with the answer. So Rob asks, Perfect. I am a partner in a food related business. We made it through the pandemic by making a bunch of changes to our business and now things are good. Or so I thought last week, my partner came to me and told me that he was not happy and wanted me to buy him out. Man, I've been here. This is an interesting yes. one. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know how to proceed. Cash is short, and I will have to replace the partner since they manage the operations side of the business. Help. Yeah, man. Go, so, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yours. I, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's two things, really, right? The the. I mean, number one, it's like a bomb drop in your lap, especially when you, you thought things were going well. And, yeah. Um, that's a tough one. It's like breaking up in a relationship, you know, it's like a divorce. Um, the other part is the, the cash requirements, how, how that will impact your business. Yeah. And the, the other thing perhaps equally important or maybe more so is getting someone to do, especially if they're a, an operating partner, like sounds like yeah. Rob has, um, someone managing the operation side of their business. So you got to go out and find their a replacement. Um, but I think the first once you get over, maybe the first thing you have to do is ask for some time. Yeah, gosh, to I, I, right? I was taking notes here because I I like to make sure I'm listening to what you're saying. But as ideas yeah. come to my head, I take the notes so I can have it later. And literally, as you were saying that, I was typing the word time. So yeah, you have to have some, right? Y yeah, uh, yeah, and, for sure. And yeah, you need to be able to to think and and talk to your advisors and and how how things are going to work. So. You, you probably uh, need to take a step back. Then you need to engage with your partner and say, okay, look, I, I need 30 days or whatever to, to think this through. And hopefully, you know, it sounds like in this case, you know, it's not like some animosity or some big problem. Right. This guy, this, right. their partner to, is going to leave tomorrow. So hopefully you go, look, okay, uh, I, I respect what you said. I'm sure he's already told him that. Um, well, I, I want to figure this out. I need you know, 30 days or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and, or 90 days, I don't know. After 30 days, you may say, okay, let's plan. You may need to plan it over, you know, a year if you need it to get, get this person, you know, out For of your sure. business. Oh um, yeah. And then when it comes to the, the finance part of it, well, you, you know, they're going to know your business and the finances of your business. And, and I don't think they're in a position to make an unrealistic demand on the business right uh and if you if let's no but they may make a difficult request yes they probably will it, and yeah. and the valuation of the business i think comes into play and how you get that uh and hopefully you have some sort of working agreement partnership agreement uh management document if you know if you've got yeah. an llc operating agreement that describes a method to value your business, right? Yeah, good luck. Big, big, big uh, most businesses don't have this. I, I, I mean, I, you know, we don't have this here for what we do. Yeah, uh, it, yeah it, it's priceless, Dave. It's priceless. It, well, yes. Oh no, no, no. It, it, it's yeah. more than priceless. That's right. Yeah. 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 By the way, I want you to buy me out. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's yeah, it. yeah. I've, I've been here. I've I've had this conversation when. Uh, I, Greg, my original partner with Backbeat Media. In fact, I I referenced him in the prior episode. He was the one with the phrase, has the added benefit of being true. 
uh, he, uh, yeah. he came to me and we had run this business for, I, I mean, it had been well over 10 years and we're doing well. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't kicking off millions and millions of dollars or anything like that, you know, but it was, it was supporting us both for sure. And, and okay. many other people. And he came to me and he said, listen, you know, my, my interests have changed and he wanted to go and uh, he went and co-founded the Brooklyn Zen Center and became a Buddhist priest, uh, wow. which he, which is what he does today. Yeah. And, Perfect. and yeah. yeah and yeah. right. So good. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, you got to follow your passion here. Like I, I get it. And, uh, and so he said, you know, I, I want you to, uh, I want, I want to get bought out. I was like, okay, well, how are we going to do this? And so, yeah. you know, he had an idea of what he needed. And he also understood that time, he was a functional partner. It wasn't, you know, he wasn't a silent partner or anything like that at that point. Okay. And he was like, okay, but I have some ideas. He, you know, he came in with a proposed solution path or at least solution ideas that were super helpful. Good we for him. we yeah, tweaked great. them together, but it, it, you know, he's like, look, I know you're going to need time. Uh, I, I, he's like, I would like a, fixed salary for both the time that I'm here and for some period of time thereafter. And I, I forget what it was. And even if I remember, sure. you know, it was all confidential. So I'm not going to, not going to share any of that, but yeah, it's it, great it, though, that he took the time to really get, here's what I want instead here, of just dumping it all on you. Here's what I want. And I, you know, obviously I listened to him and I was, I was surprised, but not, I mean, I was not expecting it, but it made sense for him. It wasn't, I mean, it was out of the blue, but it wasn't out of the blue. You know, it's like th these things. So we, um, we, I looked at it and as the partner who remained, I took his ideas and evaluated them based on what I thought was the most important thing to him. And, and I don't, like we, we maintain a very good relationship. You do, when you go into these things, you do have to be a little bit selfish and you have to be protective of your own interests and make sure that, you know, you, you are represented in this and the future of the business is represented yeah. in, in all of this. But it, you know, it was like, okay, well, he's asking for a lot, uh, on the surface. What is he really, what do I think he really needs? Where do I think there might be some wiggle room uh, you know, to to a protect some of my interest and in, and in, you know the health of the business going forward, and so I think whatever he asked for for the flat monthly rate, we left alone. I didn't because I was like, okay, he clearly yeah. has some idea. He needs this amount of cash guaranteed to him, but he probably doesn't need it for as long as he asked for. So we we I think we negotiated. I don't remember the details, you know, but I think we negotiated on the length of time both that he stayed here at backbeat and then the time after that where it was not an earnout because it was you know it was a it was a guaranteed payment whether the business did well or not but you know it was okay. a it was a payout right you know it wasn't yes. Yes. and and that of course by by adjusting the time that adjusted the the overall amount uh, thankfully we didn't have to go we were able to arrive at, very quickly at a happy arrangement and so we didn't have to go down the path of having the business valued by some somebody outside the business which you know can be uh, can be a huge risk and a huge headache and <laughs> so yeah, many very things. expensive yeah well it can be expensive to get it done and then the result of it is going to be expensive for someone you just don't know yes. who going in yeah um yeah. a friend of mine th this was an interesting thing uh and i, I need to be careful not to share confidential uh, names or scenarios, but a friend of mine was in this position where he was being bought out and it was, it was a clause that they had put into the contract many years prior. They all knew at some point it was coming and he said, okay, now I want to enact it. And the way they valued the business so that they could th then, you know, value his percentage of it and pay him out or, uh, was in the contract he had put in there. He said, okay, look, here's, uh, here's the way to do this to avoid the time and expense of bringing in a business valuation expert. What we're going to do is you come up with a number for the shares 
you know, for what the, the value of the business or the value of a share, it and you know, it's, it's all the same. And I come up with a number. And obviously, if we're if we're at the same number, well, then great. But now we know what each other's numbers are, and we're probably not going to be the same. Uh, if uh, if we can't agree on a number and we then bring in a valuation expert, what happens is we both revert to our original numbers and the valuation expert then comes in and does their uh, does their their math, whatever their math is. And when they come up with a valuation, whichever one of our original offers it was closest to, that's what we go with. So the, yeah, that's a good way there's, to do it. there's no case in which you would go with the valuation by the expert. You would go with the valuation by one party or the other party or the other and yeah. whichever one. And, it, and that was built into the contract to disincentivize either one from pulling in an expert. Right. You know, yes. because because that's what you don't want to do is. And, and so this made it in theory, made it worse than whatever the expert would come up with. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. But, it, but, no, but, but it, yeah. And, and, and he said to me, he's like, you know, I thought I was super smart when I did this 10 years ago. He's like, now that I'm at this point, he's like, I'm really kind of kicking myself because it makes me not want to bring in the valuation expert. I'm like, yeah, uh, man, like it worked. He's like, yeah, it worked. Yeah, He's like, I right. outsmarted it works myself. For both of you. It works yeah. for both. Right. Yeah, but they, they did both. avoid the expert. They, you know, they, they came up with it. So I, I liked that path because it forces you to just be reasonable people and sit down and do it because I like it too. I, yeah, it was it was brilliant. It really and it's you could propose that still. Yeah, if yeah, you, yeah you, don't you don't have, have to have, have it that. in writing. That's yeah, right, yeah. Rob. You could you could you could just say, hey, you come up with a number. I'll come up with a number. If we're so far apart that it doesn't make sense, we could get an outside evaluator, and we're going to take whatever our partner number that's closest to that. Yeah, uh, you could you could have that agreement, and and I'm, hopefully you've got a good enough relationship where. You can work with this person, give yourself some time, get some outside advisors. I'm not a big fan of getting like attorneys involved, especially in the beginning. I like to talk to the attorney and then manage the relationship. Uh, yes. I I, more I, authentic. I would, um, I would yeah. definitely talk with your attorney immediately yes. and, immediately. and, and start to think about a stru a legal structure of this sale. But, but I agree with Shannon that you want to, if you can, maintain the conversation between you and your soon to be former partner uh, between the two of you and not letting the attorneys, uh, you know, right. just be the ones, be the mouthpieces because they, they will, and they will kill a deal. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they will. And you may need to, you probably will need to find a different attorney than your, your corporate yeah. or your company attorney, right? At least because one of that, you will. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. That's great. Well, that that's correct. So he, he may need to get it or, you, you know, sometimes it's with, your, with backbeat corporate, our, our corporate attorney remained our corporate attorney and handled this for us. And I don't, I think, I think we both agreed. I mean, we, you know, we came up with the terms and so, we just used the one attorney to draft the yes, paperwork, that's great. Yeah, that's good. but it was amicable. It, like, yeah, it, it wasn't, there was, there was zero friction about this. I mean, it, yeah, it awesome. you know, I, I was, I was a little concerned because I'm, I'm a partnership person. I'd like to have a business partner. It's proven well yeah, for me, too. except in the scenarios yeah. where it has proven terrible for me, but yeah, you know, it happens. Yeah, it happens, it happens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So Good Rob, luck, Rob. I, I hope that yeah. yeah, I hope that helps you a little bit. If you if you have more specific question or you want to break down or ex expand on something, feedback at businessshow.co. We'd be uh, glad to help. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. You want to read? Let's Claire? talk about uh, yeah. Let's talk about Claire's question. So this is a really interesting one. Um, Claire's Claire says I have a side hustle that I think would be a great small business for me. I have listened to your show for years. I think I'm finally ready to quit my day job and focus full time on my business. That's awesome. Good for her. Uh, my question is this. My current employer could be a great customer for my small business, but I've always been hesitant, hesitant to bring it up for fear that they may think it's a conflict of interest. Do you have any ideas on how I might recruit them as a client either before or after I leave? Uh, love the show and thanks for your help. Uh, yeah, I I do. I've I did this. <laughs> You've done this, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. it's how. So I I I was a full time employee once uh, back in the day, and the 
final company for whom I was a full-time employee, at least in terms of companies where I did not have significant ownership, was Citibank. And okay. I, yeah, I worked in their, uh, it was a fascinating division. I loved it. We, it was their home banking division. And this is early 90s. So, uh, you know, home banking was very different from what we know it as today. There was no internet involved in it. It was all dial up and it was fun right. stuff. And I decided that I wanted more schedule flexibility and uh, and thought, OK, well, y- you know, I, 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 I would love to keep doing what I'm doing for Citibank. They loved what I was doing for them. So I, I went to my boss and I said, hey, um, I want, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm ready to kind of make a change here. And I want some more schedule flexibility. I, I didn't go right. into it saying I'm starting my own separate business. I said I want some schedule flexibility. And mm. I, I, oh, okay. You know, and I said, um, and which was true, had the added benefit of being true. And uh, and and I I said, you know, I'd I'd like to limit my time for Citibank to three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. I said I think I can still get the job done. Uh, that I'm doing for you in those three days. Is there any world where that would work for me to remain on full time? You, you know, as a, as an employee, you know, you know, sure. not. A, and they were like, "There's no world." Like it, it, today, <laughs> that might that world might easily exist, right? This was yeah. you know 25 yeah. almost 30 years ago, and it was 30 years ago, wasn't it? So uh, <laughs> anyway, um, and they said no, and I said okay. Well, what if I become a consultant here? And they were like, that could work. We have a lot more flexibility with that. You know, we don't have to really report that in the same way up through the, you know, corporate red tape. Uh, you just need to, you know, set up your own business entity and 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 then, you know, we'll we'll give you a consulting contract. And it, nice. Yeah. yeah, that that process of getting a consulting contract approved through Citibank legal 30 years ago was a disaster. And I don't know if these people quite knew what they were getting into or if they valued my work so much that they were kind of fine with dealing with it. But it, it took several months for it to happen months during which they, they could not pay me. So that was interesting. Uh, and so I kind of had to float myself th- through that, even though I was working for him and I knew they were good for it. I mean, I wasn't worried about it, but there were other people in that department while I was there that they wanted to hire as consultants. And once they got my consulting contract approved, uh, our finance guy brought me in and he's like, okay, I never want to do that again. I'm like, yeah, I understand. He's like, so here's the deal. I got three people uh, this summer that I need to hire as consultants you're going to hire them and I'm going to pay you $10 an hour on top of whatever I tell you to pay them. And that's going to be your administrative fee. Are you okay with that? I'm like, yeah, man, like, that sounds great. Yeah. I think that's a, a, a really great uh, example of, you know, as like for Claire is maybe there's a, a opportunity that on both sides uh, of this. Yep. Yeah, and and that's how I would try to frame it. Absolutely, of, of something positive for both. It's like, hey, I want to stay involved with the company, but I I want this, and and maybe it's, hey, I want more time or flexibility for my family, but I can still do this, yeah. and I could save you. And since I know this business so well, I think I could save you money, or I can help with a better quality supplier, whatever it is. I, I, I don't have those details. Yeah, we don't have the but, details. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. but I I think that starting to have that discussion with them and and framing it as I, I want you know, I need more time for this that, that gives you that opportunity to interject it it may not work but it it may especially if, if you know you come back and say well I'd love to just have the opportunity to uh you know to try it depending how the how it works just yeah. try it or bid on it I can oh, I think yeah. I can provide this for less I've seen what it takes to do it. I know so much about this. I'd love to, you know, work with you. Maybe it does involve staying on as a consultant after you go. And maybe when you tell them, they're going to be like, oh, no, you're leaving. But you could say, well, how about I don't have to change? I don't have to leave 100 percent. And then then you could introduce that next step. It's like, you know, I could also, you know, do offer make, you know, offer this and 
They may jump at it or they may say, well, let's start as a consultant, see how that goes. And if that works out, maybe we could become your customer yeah. for whatever you're saying. Well, I, I mean, there's, there's very little difference between consultant and, you know, them hiring you as a consultant and them being your customer. I mean, it, it, from a legal standpoint, yeah. it is it really literally are. the same thing. Yes. Right. Yeah. So and and I remember when I was doing that contract with Citibank, one of the clear you know, I mean, one of the one of the the line items in it was that I had to offer my services to other people, right? Because they were basically going down the list of what at the time was the the delineation between employee and ten ninety nine contractor, right? Like they, I got it. Yeah, you know, so they they were like, you you agree that you are offering your services to other people, whether or not I ever actually engaged with other people, they didn't care, but they needed me to, to attest to the fact that I was open to that idea. Cause otherwise I was just an employee. And if, of course I was very open to the idea. I, that's what I was going to do on my other two days, you know? Yeah. So go. it worked out really well. Um, but it, it, you know, a lot of it was their idea, the path that we took to do it. And yeah, but maybe that's can, can, you know, maybe Claire can, kind of make that happen right yeah she changes yeah, have the, the conversation and, yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah have, start the discussion about more time and this and you just never know they could be thinking wow gee we we need to eliminate a position and maybe you going as a consultant you're you know you, you get to leave with some training wheels so to speak where you still get some revenue yeah. and it allows you to to you know go out so try to find i i think you need to find who could be your champion Right. Yes, who, you definitely need that would, champion. That's right. Yeah. Who yeah. would agree that that's a great idea, even if it's not your boss or a supervisor or something that ultimately would have the uh, ability to make the decision? It could be a coworker, it could be somebody else in another department that your your side hustle you know has to do with, but someone that can help champion this concept that you can get over to your side and explain things to them and you know be a confident and they could help you kind of meet, you know, get through the whatever red tape and and be a voice because it, it's always more powerful when someone else describes the benefit than you. Oh, right? yeah, for sure. Always more powerful. Yeah. And it, it's, it seems really authentic and because they have maybe no vested interest or maybe they do. Maybe they say, wow, it'd be great to have somebody on the outside that understands our business so much that, you know, we could benefit from. So, yeah, I, I would I would do that. Open up the dialogue find somebody that can, you know, champion to help, help you out and, and change the frame of it to be a positive for both the company uh, and for you. Yeah. And like Dave said, maybe, maybe go into it with a, I want more free time. I need more time to do this. And um, I think that could be. Well yeah. There's other things I'm, I'm looking to do. I want to stay, I, I want to keep doing the work that I'm doing for you. And, and then it becomes a negotiation. I mean, I remember, uh, I forget what I was making there. Uh, but it was, you know, I mean, it's 30 years ago. It's probably uh, 30, 40 grand a year or something like that. And I remember telling them, they said, well, okay, well, what would your hourly rate be? And I, I wasn't as, uh, you know, I, I, it was early on in my my negotiating time. And I remember telling my, my boss who became, was my champion through this process. I'm like, well, I, you know, I'd like to get 30, 45 an hour, but I'd take 35. I, I remember saying that to him. And he kind of laughed. He's like, 45 is super high for this, man. He's like, uh, but I think I can make it happen at 35. And he did the quick math. He's like, because 35 costs us the same as 35 times, you know, eight times three. So 24 times 35 is the same as whatever we're paying you as a full-time employee now, including the, you know, the extra 30% that your benefits cost us. He's like, so I think we can make that work. And I had done that math going in, knowing what my net cost to them was, which essentially is your salary plus about 30%, at least back then. That's what it was. I'm, yeah. I'm guessing that's about what it is now too. So, you know, the, but the extra taxes they have to pay and, and all that. And, and remember that for you too, that as soon as you are a contractor, you are picking up those what they call self-employment taxes, which are the the employer taxes that uh, the federal taxes that have been paid. So, you know, just bear that in mind. That's right. You get some deduction opportunities, too. That hopefully you learn to take advantage of like Shannon and I have. But uh, there you go, man. Live yeah. that charmed life. That's it. Hopefully that helps out, Claire. If you have more questions, you want to. Uh, us to dig a little deeper f just respond to that email feedback at businessshow.co we'd be glad to help yeah absolutely it's good stuff thank you for sending in your questions we love getting your questions if we could do every episode just answering your questions we would and you can make that happen feedback 
at businessshow.co. And uh, yeah, make sure you check out our sponsors, Rate Tracker at sky sale.com slash rate tracker, Shopify.com slash SBS. You can just go to businessshow.co and see them. Keep living that charmed life, as Shannon said. See you next week.